Hey, everybody. My name is Anna Carolina Pereira. I'm a college professor at the Ringling College of Art and Design, an official ZBrush live streamer for Pixelogic, technical artist, character artist, and freelancer. I specialize in the VR development fields. Today, I'm going to show you how to make morph targets with ZBrush, Maya, and Unreal. Keep in mind that just about any software has the same kind of techniques for morph targets. So what is a morph target? A morph target is also known as a blend shape, and it's just a way to do animation. But in this case, instead of using, for example, a rig made of bones to move the animation, you're using per vertex animation by storing different states of the same mesh. Every vertex on a mesh has a name, or really a number. We can take a model, deform it ahead of time, turn that deformation into a blend shape, and then blend between the first model and the second model. In each keyframe of an animation, the vertices that are being moved in the blend shape are interpolated between the two stored positions, depending on how much of the blend shape is activated. Before we get started, there are a few little rules that you need to know about making blend shapes or morph targets. The first one is that when making these, you need to maintain consistency in vertex count and vertex order. That means you can't be adding vertices, subtracting, dividing the model, or changing it, the geometry itself in any way. You can move the vertexes, you just can't change the amount of vertexes there are. If you're using Maya to make your blend shapes, make sure to always delete history. And lastly, make sure to only manipulate the vertices that you intend to work on. To begin, let's look at my ZBrush setup. So all I have here is a little sculpt of a little frog. And where the magic happened isn't actually necessarily on the straight sculpt. It's in the layers. For those of you who haven't used layers before, all they are is um, kind of like in Photoshop, you can make a new layer and all of the changes you make to your model will be stored within that layer. So you can turn it on, off, or change the intensity like this. All I've done here is basically create a layer that has the sculptural uh, aspect of a frog when its little chin pouch is fully inflated, I guess. The layer will basically be storing our morph target for us. This is how you work layers in case you've never done them before. You take your mesh and you click this big plus button in the layers. You have to have your mesh at the highest subdivision for this to work. ZBrush will give you a warning if you don't. You can rename your layer by pressing this name button. So I'm going to call this uh, demo layer. So let's make a change to the model. And any changes we make will be recorded within the layer. So I'm going to just do something ridiculous for illustration's sake. So let's give it a little unicorn horn. If I stop recording the layer, you'll see that now we have a circle, which means the record button, and the eyeball, which means visibility of the layer. I can turn the layer on and off. This gives you a lot of flexibility. I recommend to people that I mentor and teach to use layers for, for situations such as um, making design changes that you're not totally sure about so that you can iterate on your designs easier. You can do it on things like texturing and detailing, which is makes it super easy to blend a bunch of details together. You can use it for morph targets, of course, and you can use it for posing. So you can change the intensity of the layer by using the slider, and you can even invert the layer. So any changes you made get inverted. To create a new layer or a new morph targets. I'm going to just go ahead and press new for the new layer. Oh, it needs to be at the highest subdivision. Then I'm going to get to work and make sure to only edit the vertices that you want to edit. If while you're editing the throat, for example, you accidentally add an artifact somewhere else, when you choose to animate your morph targets, the other parts will also animate and will be very distracting. Let's say you do accidentally mess with something that you don't mean to use in your morph target. So let's see the effect that, that would give us. So as we test the morph target, you see the back, that line that we added, it's actually animating too. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn off that layer. I'm going to go to morph target and I'm going to store morph target. I'm going to go back to recording that layer and I'm going to take my morph target brush. And what this will do is it will shift the areas that the brush is, is brushing to the way that they were when the morph target was stored. 
ZBrush has a plugin called Maya Blend Shapes that allows you to make new layer, turn off all the layers, etc. But the most important thing is that it lets you export the blend shapes or morph targets into Maya automatically. So make sure you are on the subdivision you want to export in. So for me, I'm going to go down to my Lua subdivision. And this is something really important. You want to do this on a mesh that has the final topology that you want to use and that has the UV maps that you want to use. Once you start making morph targets, you can no longer change the mesh, specifically how many verts it has and the vertex order. So be really careful. Make sure that this is the last step you do in the character creation process. I'm going to go ahead and click Export Blend Shapes, and I'll see you in Maya. Once Maya opens, you'll see your model. Mine's kind of a tiny because it's a tiny little frog. And there will be this window already open called Blend Shapes, and you'll be able to use to drag. And there will be as many layers as you had. There will be different blend shapes for each layer. You can just drag and check it out, and it seems to be fully functional right now. From here, you can just use the timeline if you want to, and key your morphs accordingly. It's literally that easy, but now let me show you a little bit more about blend shapes in Maya. So the way they work is, basically you'll have two models, the target model and the one that the blend shape is being created from. The model that the blend shape is made from is actually in here, but it's invisible. So let me go to display, show selection. You'll see it actually right here. And it has this weird material on it right now. But you can actually move it around if you want to. So it's taking the vertex locations from this piece and applying it to this piece. To export this model with its morph targets to Unreal, I'm just going to select it and go to File, Export Selection. The export selection presets does matter. Make sure you export your animation out if you want it, right? Animation right there. And under deformed models, make sure that skins and blend shapes is turned on. This will make sure that you can export your blend shapes. Then just press export. We are in Unreal now. So I just opened up Unreal. This is like an empty level with just a sunlight, skylights, and sky sphere inside of it for now. And this here is the content browser. I just made a little folder before I started recording called Morph Tutorial. I'm going to drag in my FBX that I exported from Maya straight into here. Once you drag in your file, you'll get this little FBX import options. We need to let Unreal know that this is a skeletal mesh, so check on skeletal mesh. Since this is the first time we're importing this, just set the skeleton to none and it will make a new skeleton. Open up the advanced options and then check on import morph targets or this whole thing will fail. And then just hit import all. Let's check on the file that we imported. So here we have the skeletal mesh, the animation, the physics assets, the skeleton, and just the random material that got created once we imported it. It will be replaced with the final material later. Well, let's open up the mesh first, and we can see if everything's okay. Check your mesh always. Make sure that there are no major issues or anything like that. So it's kind of floating, so I'll have to fix that. Uh, let's test the morph targets. So here in morph target preview, you're going to be able to test your morph targets as much as you want to see how it works. Make sure you test everything. You can check out the skeleton, which in this case, it's just uh, two bones because I didn't actually rig this for this tutorial. And then in animation, you can check out the animation. And here's the single curve we made in Maya earlier. I'm going to apply this material I had previously made for the little frog. It's really simple, it's just made in Substance Painter. Making this material is not going to be part of the scope of the tutorial, but I will be adding a little PDF on my art station about how I got it to work dynamically. I'm going to go to the frog skeletal mesh window right here and simply choose the correct frog material. M underscore frog 001. Once you start messing with the morph targets after you apply the material, you might see that the material goes away. And that's because in the material panel, clicking the material itself, you have to go scroll down to usage and go to use with morph targets and make sure that that's checked on. If you don't do that, your, your entire mesh will basically turn gray. To finish testing it out, let's go ahead and drag the mesh of the little frog in. I'm going to press F to look around it. 
And we can kind of see it, how it looks in Unreal. It's going to need some little material for its eyes. And when I press play, you will notice that it's not animating. So I'm going to press the little frog again and go to Use Animation Assets and Frog Anim. So you can actually make an animation blueprints to do more advanced things. You know, if you use the animation uh, asset like this, it will just loop itself. But it's already enough to get testing. On my own, I just went ahead and I set up this little scene with the frog and like a new animation based on some reference that I found of like how little poison dart frogs or tree frogs uh, do their calls and did a little lighting, but the process is exactly the same. This animation was done in Maya, just like the other one. I really hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. I hope it was useful for you. Morph targets or blend shapes will work the same in whatever software you choose to use. And they can be so useful for your projects in the future. If you haven't yet, make sure to follow the NVIDIA Studio Creators YouTube channel so that you can see a bunch of other cool tutorials by some amazing artists. Being able to run morph targets like this in a, in a relatively high poly mesh while streaming, because I streamed it, and while recording at the same time, is quite, quite amazing. And not to mention, it allows me to push how far I'm going with my morph targets. I've done projects in the past where I've done at least 51 morph targets for facial activations. And uh, sometimes it can be a little difficult to, to make it run at a proper frame rate. But I don't have to worry with this particular project, thankfully. All the rendering is going super smooth and there's no problems at all. Have a wonderful day.